Uh, on a more serious note, we had the big trade between the New York Jets and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for Darrell Revis. Okay, Darrell Revis is arguably the best cornerback, certainly the best shutdown cornerback in the NFL prior to having his knee injury. Now, he's coming off a very serious knee injury, so the deal was done. The Jets, what I would call a somewhat a dysfunctional organization, and Tampa Bay, again, somewhat dysfunctional. They make the deal. And I believe, again, I, it was at six years, $96 million, the, uh, the, uh, the extension? Yep. Okay. It's non-guaranteed. Not a dime of it is guaranteed, which is very, very unusual if you're going to make a trade of this kind. And yet, we're looking at it from the point of view that the Jets feel it's, it's a little too, uh, too risque uh, to keep him, even as great as he is because of that knee injury, notwithstanding the fact that Adrian Peterson came back from a very serious knee injury. And Tampa Bay decides, okay, you know what? We'll give up our first-round pick, and we'll go with Darrell Rivas. If they can get anything out of Darrell Rivas, even close to what he was, to me it's a steal of a deal. And yet there is that big concern. How do you analyze it? Well, you know, from the perspective of the contract, I think both parties pretty much got what they want here. Rivas gets six years, $96 million. $16 million per season. That makes him the highest-paid cornerback in NFL history. That's always what he's wanted year after year when he's looking for contracts and when he's holding out, when he's complaining to the front office. He feels that he deserves to be the highest-paid cornerback in the game. So he's got that now. He should be very happy. From the Buccaneers' perspective, they have a little bit of protection here, uh, signing a, a player to a big-game contract who just so happens to be coming off a, a, a bad knee injury from the year before and might not be able to get back to that level. But it is when, when Revis does come back, he's going to be pretty good. Uh, it might take some time to get back to his Pro Bowl form, but I think he's still got enough um, of what the Buccaneers need for you know him to be that Daryl Revis we all know and love. But um, you know the Buccaneers get what they need. Uh, they, they, it's a 16 million pay as you go, so they'll pay 16 million this year. But like you said, Perry, none of it's guaranteed. So if after two years the Buccaneers realize it's not working out, they can go ahead and part ways with Darrell Revis. There won't be any dead money on the cap or anything like that. They'll be uh, they'll be just fine. 16 million per year. From a trade perspective, I think the Buccaneers do pretty well here. They give up their first round pick and a conditional third or fourth in 2014. Uh, nothing big on that. They get a Pro Bowl corner. Uh, for the Jets, I know a lot of people will complain about general manager John Itzik possibly not getting as much as possible, but he inherited the messy situation here. Um, he needed to get anything he could for the Jets, and they are, and, and, or for Revis, I should say, and the team is in rebuilding mode, so now they have two of the first 13 picks in the draft. That's the best way to rebuild the NFL, through the draft. What I like about it, you sort of touched upon it now, when you talk about the economics of football, if you're able to do a deal where you don't get hit in any part of the cap, you know, aside from just the salary, but, you know, the bonus, if you're talking about it, whether it's amortized over X amount of years, you can get rid of the player at any point in time. Again, when a contract, uh, any contract is just a guaranteed portion. But I do like the fact that uh, how Tampa was able to do the deal. And I don't know whether it's because, you know, Darrell Reeves a lot of options. So to me, it was a very, very creative uh, contract done as the the capology or whatever it is with the the bucks to do the deal in such a way that I really don't think they got crippled that much. Well, I'll tell you what, if if Revis wanted more options or perhaps perhaps a contract with guaranteed money, um, he would have really had to lower his standards because Tampa Bay was the only team even close to to giving him a contract that looked like this. That was a report that came out yesterday. Nobody else was even in the mix. It was the Buccaneers, and that was it. So Tampa Bay certainly pays a lot to get the man they want. But let's take a look at their secondary now. It's Terrell Revis, Eric Wright, last year's top 10 pick at safety, Mark Barron. Uh, you just signed Deshaun Goltz into a $41 million deal over five years. This is a team that ranked dead last in the secondary last season in pass defense. Now suddenly they've got quite the talented unit. So going up against Atlanta and New Orleans twice every year, that should give them the arsenal they need to compete. Definitely. I mean, again, um... This is a franchise to me that just, it, it has to do something significant because I think of the franchises in the NFL and, and, and Tampa has had very limited success in its entire history. It needs to do something impactful to just, you know what, either to sell tickets, to be relevant or whatever you want to, however you want to say it. But Tampa Bay 
just never seems to do anything that from year to year you say, wow, Tampa Bay's a team that I'm looking forward, that I think can go all the way to the Super Bowl. Well, two years in a row, they've collapsed down the stretch after having a relatively decent start to the season. Um, one of those calls for Raheem Morris' job. The other was last year, which was Greg Schiano's first year with the team. You know, the reports, say the grumblings out of Tampa seem to be that this is an organization that is not sold on Josh Freeman at quarterback and that they're trying to move on from him um, despite drafting him. You know, the same year Detroit took Stafford in the first round and the Jets took Sanchez in the first round. Uh, Freeman was the guy that went off the board around 15 or 16, and it looks like Tampa wants to move on from him. They don't think he's the guy that can lead this team to where they need to get to. So I find that interesting. Um, obviously, if you're going to win in this league, you're going to need a quarterback. So now that they've spent all this money on the defensive side of the ball, all those draft picks along the defensive line, $55 million to Vincent Jackson, et cetera, and I guess probably the next focus is if they want a new quarterback, that's where it's going to be. 